I was bored, so I got in my best shape ever. Here's how. I think like a lot of you for the past couple months, we've had a little bit more time on our hands and I wanted to try to use those very wisely. I made a video about a year ago called I've been working out for 20 years and I'm in my worst shape ever. And over that period of time, I've tried to use some healthy habits, which I wanna cover in this video to hopefully help you out as well so that maybe you can use them if you're at a point in your life where maybe you're unmotivated, maybe you need to have a little guidance in order to get where you wanna go. You can use some of the things I've used to help yourselves out. He racks my weights. <laughs> He's also my motivation. Today is a day for the moment of truth. I have not deadlifted 495 pounds since before my injury, and I'm gonna try it out. I haven't done this in a while, so a little nervous. I've worked my way up to it, but I haven't hit this number in about two years, so here we go. Yeah, 495 pounds done. Super happy I was able to pull that amount. Now, I know there are other people who lift much more than that, but as a personal satisfaction, that feels really good for me because it's nice to be able to know that I can get back to that number. And you know, to be completely honest, even if I couldn't, I wouldn't be too hard on myself. And really, you shouldn't be either. If you're coming back from an injury or maybe you're just not able to work up to the amount that you imagine yourself doing, that doesn't mean that you can't do it in the future or that you can't still make great progress because honestly, I've really scaled back on the amount of weights I've been lifting. I still lift intense, I really focus on supersets, drop sets, but I'm not really chasing the weights as much as I used to going for those really heavy lifts because it's just not as much of a priority for me right now. More of a priority is just keeping that consistency and I think that's what we all need because a lot of the focus, you'll hear things such as it's 80% diet, it's 20% workout, but one thing you really wanna try and remember is it's all about the mental game. It's 100% mental because without it, no one's gonna be waking you up in the morning, no one's gonna be making your meals, you you have to do a lot of those things yourself. You really have to want it. You have to have the desire, you have to have the willpower, and those things take time. You're not just gonna have it instantly. This is something that takes years of work. I've been doing this since I'm a teenager, I'm in my 30s now, and there's days it's still not easy. But it's that consistency that helps out because if you're busting your ass, more often than you're not, you're still gonna reap those rewards. So you don't feel like you have to be 100% on all the time pushing it as hard as you can because you really don't wanna burn out, but at the same time, you wanna just consistently work hard. It's not easy, but nothing worth doing ever was. I'm kinda telling myself that, by the way. Sometimes when I'm talking to the camera, I'm basically talking to myself, but damn it, sometimes you need to motivate yourself in order to get it done. Something that I really attribute to getting into shape, getting back into shape, staying motivated, is setting goals. Both small goals, large goals, short-term goals, long-term goals. And the one that I'm currently working on is my running. We've done a few challenges, the FBI fitness test, and Navy SEALs fitness test, and there was one part of those that I personally was lagging quite a bit far behind, and that was the running. So someone made a suggestion that we should try doing Buff Dudes Learn to Run a Six Minute Mile, which I thought was a great suggestion, so that's actually what I'm doing now. I've still got quite a ways to go. I actually started at an eight minute mile. I've whittled it down to six minutes and 55 seconds, but obviously I've got quite a ways to go, and there's certain days it almost feels impossible because, you know, it just, it, for me, it hurts. I've never been a huge fan of running and it, it's tough. And that mental toughness is huge that I'm learning. The more that I do it, if I really convince myself I can't do it, I don't do a very good job. If I really keep that mental toughness, I do much better than I thought I would. So my journey isn't over yet. I'm continuing to do it a couple times a week. I'm doing those runs. I'm getting just a tiny bit better. And that's what it's all about. You wanna get just a little bit better every single time you do it. Don't give up until you've achieved your goal. And that's what I'm doing right now. So 
I'll keep you updated on that. It's probably not gonna be tomorrow when I release a video, but I will release one in the future, updating you on how I'm doing because this is definitely something I'm trying to be as passionate as I can about. And it's great because it keeps me accountable. I know that I have to do it. I wake up in the morning. I know which days are the time to run. It's not always my favorite thing, but I go out and do it. And once I'm finished, I feel damn good. And that's what it's about, setting those goals and more importantly, sticking to those goals. So that's just one of the recommendations that I would really say that you go out and do. Set yourself some short-term and long-term goals and more importantly, stick to those goals. So in order to get into shape, in order to become a buff dude, you gotta have a good workout plan. And I've been using our superhero plan. Link in description if you wanna pick it up and do it yourself. I've been doing primarily stage three over the past couple months because it's full of supersets. You're doing a muscle group at a time and it just works really well. At least for me, because you're keeping your heart rate high, you're really pushing yourself to your maximum potentials. And as you can see, I got pretty damn good results in the process and I'm not done yet because I'm gonna keep going through this. When I wrap it up, I'm keeping notes of all my records, what my lifts are, and I'm just gonna try to keep amping it up because you're always trying to get just a little bit stronger. That's my goal. And then in the process, you end up looking pretty damn good too. So it's win-win. So you'll notice in almost every single one of our programs, there's one special ingredient. And that ingredient are the supersets. Yeah. One ingredient we don't have in our plans is badass montage music. That you're just gonna have to find yourself. But it works so damn good. We need to come out with like a program that when you open it up, you can press a button and it plays music to like the certain phase or stage that you're, you're doing the workouts to. I'm pretty sure those are children's books. Yeah, so it works perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Every long journey starts with a single step, or in this case, a single rep. And we're on rep 3,355 million. I was gonna, I was, yeah, see, you were tricked me there because I thought you were gonna go in the thousands, but then you added the millionth in. I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's the buff dude scale. It's like 5D ascension math. That's why we read children's books. <laughs> Quick buff dude tip when you build your own home gym and it says summer, remember to add some air conditioning because we didn't, and uh, it feels like a little bit like I have my head down my own pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking jungle in here, man. I really like food. I like eating food. I like the look of a lot of food, I like the smell, I like the taste of food. It's kind of my vice. And that can be a problem sometimes because sometimes you end up eating too much food. And something that's really helped me out is doing alternative variations on popular classics, such as pizza, pancakes, waffles, desserts such as brownies, you name it, there's probably a healthy variation for it. So for pizza, I've made things like uh, crust made out of chicken, crust made out of broccoli, or for the brownies, you just use alternatives to sugar such as monk fruit. And that has really helped me out a lot because I'm satisfied, but I'm also not having the traditional macro split in a lot of those things, which is really front loaded with sugar. And I've noticed that cutting or reducing a lot of sugar for me has helped me immensely. You know, if there's probably more than five or six ingredients in the food I'm gonna purchase, I really think twice before grabbing that food. And making food at home has helped me big time. It's fun, you learn, different variations, different combinations. And it's really educational in the process because you learn what works for you, what you enjoy, and it really saves a lot of money, which, hey, that's a huge benefit as well. So don't be afraid of the kitchen. Start with something like a slow cooker. It's an easy tool. It makes it very simple to make popular recipes and slowly upgrade from there. That's what I've done over the years. And now I really enjoy being in the kitchen. It's a great experience and it's really helped with my physique as well. So you win on a lot of different fronts. And one of the things you may realize about beginning to get healthy or getting into better shape is your standards you put upon yourself become higher. So you, be you begin to get a little harder on yourself, which can turn into a little bit of a bad thing because when you're not super strict, when you're not paying attention to every little calorie, macro, how many workouts you had a week, all that stuff, you don't really, 
pay much attention. But when you do, all of a sudden, you're looking at yourself in the mirror more critical, you've got a more analytical eye, and that can get a little out of control. I know it has for me in the past, because then all of a sudden you're watching every little thing, you go over your calories or what have you, you can experience a little bit of depression, and that's just something that, I feel that you get a little better with over time. I recently had a water and caliper test done just because I was curious at the local community college. And it was interesting because usually I'll just go by the mirror test. It's however I look in the mirror is kind of how I'm feeling, how I'm looking. I don't really rely so much on my exact body fat percentage, but I've included my water and caliper test results here for you to see. And it was a little higher than I thought it would be, but I really didn't get depressed because I feel great. I'm, I'm lifting well, I'm eating good, I'm waking up, I'm getting a lot of things accomplished. So you can't always judge yourself based upon the numbers that you see on a page. And finally, we come to knowledge and action. How much knowledge you're supposed to have and when to take action. I've found that like everything in life, there's moderation, there's a healthy mix, and you can become paralyzed by the amount of information there is out there, especially now that you can find anything online. There's many different opinions, of course, as with many things in life, people take their opinion and they're very firm believers in it. And then you have people standing on the other side who are very firm believers in theirs as well. So it's a little hard to know what to do from time to time. And that's where action comes in because in order to find out what works best for you, it's good to just go in and do it yourself. I've learned a lot along the way. I think failure is a great thing. You shouldn't be afraid to fail. In fact, Every time you fail, as long as you're learning one thing, even if it's tiny, then in my opinion, you've made great progress and you can, you should continue going forward. Don't feel like you have to be amazing right out of the gates. I'm sure you could ask any guitar player, any artist, any writer. No one's amazing from the first time they pick up an instrument or a pen or in our case, a weight. It's gonna take time and it's gonna take consistency. So I hope a few of these things have helped. It's, it was a little bit more wordy, a little bit more about just kind of the inspiration, the things that helped me out. I hope maybe even one of these things can help you out a little bit. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the calorie and macro side of getting in shape, I've put a link in the description description to a video where I spent a lot of time going into that. But with this one, I wanted to focus more on kind of the mental stuff that I've been doing that's helped me out because it's helped me, as I said in the title of this video, get in the best shape of my life. So stay safe, stay buff, get out there and get it done. Hell yeah. Until next time.